that compassion and sensitivity to the feelings of others were things that young children had to learn. But now, studies are suggesting that these tendencies may be part of our inborn human nature. We seem built to prefer individuals who act in a compassionate and positive way towards others over individuals who are looking out for number one. So you might be asking yourself, if we're all born compassionate, why do we seem to act so selfish when we get older? But the real question is, do we really lose our compassion at all? To help figure it out, we're going to play another game. Watch this animation closely, and afterwards, we'll ask you a question about it. Ready? Here it goes. So what just happened? How would you describe what you just saw to someone else? We showed this animation to randomly chosen volunteers. Let's see how your story compares to theirs. The angry, aggressive orange triangle, looking for trouble, sees someone that he could pick on. And starts pushing him around, being real mean. The green dot looks like he's being attacked and is running away from the situation. Yeah, the orange triangle is a bully. The gray triangle was a good guy. He was standing up for the green circle. He was even willing to take heat to protect the little guy. Did you come up with the same story about the big orange triangle trying to bully the small green dot? Stop and think for a minute. All we showed you were a bunch of shapes moving around. They were simply triangles and dots and a few random lines. The fact that you and our volunteers assigned these shapes human qualities, creating a story about bullying with villains and heroes, is just the product of your compassionate brain. How wild is that? To help us understand just how hardwired we are for compassion is Dr. Jim Cohn, Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology at the University of Virginia. This demonstration is known as the hyder simmel test. It was originally created to understand how your brain automatically creates a story around random events. But psychologists have realized it's a perfect way to illustrate how most of us have a tendency towards compassion. And what happens in our bodies when we feel compassion is pretty amazing. Cutting-edge research has pinpointed a caretaking organ called the vagus nerve. No, not that vagus. V-A-G-U-S. The vagus nerve is one of the oldest brain structures and runs from the base of the brain to the heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, and intestines. And evidence has been found that the vagus nerve may be the compassion center in your brain. Your brain is so attuned to recognizing suffering and unfairness that even something like the video you just saw can trigger your vagus nerve and your brain's response. Scientists think this ingrained ability to be compassionate has evolved for one main reason. Survival. Helping others and relying on the kindness of strangers actually helps you to stay alive. So our brains are hardwired for compassion. But that doesn't mean that all people are equally compassionate. In fact, there are some people out there who totally lack compassion. The clinical term for a person who is devoid of compassion is psychopath. Of course, very few of us are knife-wielding killers like in the movies. But there are plenty of people living among us who do demonstrate psychopathic tendencies. And some studies suggest that as much as 1% of people in society could be psychopaths. So how would you know if you or anyone you know has psychopathic tendencies? Well, it just so happens, scientists have devised a simple test to determine just that. Want to know where you rank on the scale between compassion and psychopathy?